What if someone told you that they were going to drop a 30-ton water balloon on your neighborhood? You would probably run. But in reality, brave souls everywhere take this possibility in stride and confront it face-to-face -face fearlessly. Because the 60,000 pounds of water that is headed to your town is heading in the form of fog. Fog is most likely to occur overnight and really near dawn when the temperature of the day is normally its lowest. It's these cold temperatures that actually help produce the fog. Fog is composed of tiny water droplets. You would find about 1,500 to 3,000 droplets per cubic inch and about 56,000 gallons of water is in one cubic mile of fog, which is a whole lot of water. Each fog has its own personality and, and you have many subsets under there. The types of fogs are radiation fog, sea fog, ground fog, convection fog, upslope fog, valley fog, ice fog, and artificial fog. One particular fascinating fog would be out in San Francisco where they've named it Carl. It's particularly challenging to know if it's going to affect San Francisco or if it's going to affect Oakland. One could have 10 miles of visibility and the other one a quarter mile of visibility just because of subtle differences in wind flow. So Carl's very much has a mind of its own that oozes the fog around the bay. Fog is not only climatically significant, it is also culturally significant. Back in 1776, General George Washington and his commanders were able to escape capture by the British Army by using fog as a decoy or concealment of their location. Fog also affects sound. The higher frequency the sound, the more it affects it. The lower frequency sounds doesn't affect it as much. Thus, on ships or boats, they use a, a foghorn of a very low frequency so they can warn other vessels that they're there. Here at UPS Airlines, we have adapted to fog over time. We've gone to many Category 3 aircraft. Our 757 Boeing 757s and 767s are Category 3 aircraft. It only requires 600 foot visibility to land, which is much visibility. On every runway that you're landing on, there's a runway visible range called RVR. And that's a laser system out on a runway that measures the visibility. And then the airports themselves have what's called an instrument landing system. It's a radio frequency that the pilots can pick up on in the cockpit along with a lighting system out on the runways that allow you to land at these low visibilities. Fog forecasting to me is my expertise. So since I'm a meteorologist, this is the way to do it. My name is Jeff Peters, and I'm an aviation meteorologist at UPS Airlines.